guys! It's Miss Physics here with another electrostatics tutorial and today we're going to be talking about some of the forces and interactions between three charges. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to give a really common exam type question. I got asked this question once in an exam and we are going to break it down into super detail and then solve it step by step. So if you're kind of a newbie to electrostatics, I recommend you watch my last video. You can click on the link right here. It covers some of the more basic stuff, but hey, if you feel like you're ready or you like to live life on the edge, let's get started. So the question is, in the diagram, Q1 equals Q2 equals Q3 equals 2.3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. What is the size of the electrostatic force experienced by charge Q1? So if you're already freaking out a little, a little bit, <laughs> you totally have the right to. This question is an absolute killer. But don't worry, because we're going to break it down into baby steps. So the first thing that we want to do is look at the actual diagram before we start talking about equations or numbers. So what's actually going on in the diagram? Well, we have three charges of equal magnitude, Q1, Q2 and Q3. So Q1 and Q2 are separated by a distance of 2 centimeters and Q1 and Q3 are separated by a distance of 1 centimeter. So just from this, which do you think out of Q2 and Q3 are going to be having a stronger effect on Q1? Right, Q3, because it's closer. All of the charges have equal magnitude, right? It says that in the question. And the fact that Q3 is closer to Q1 than Q2 means it's going to be having a stronger force on it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, what's actually happening in the system? We know that like charges repel and opposite charges attract, right? So are these charges repelling each other? Are they attracting each other? Are they positive? Are they negative? Are two positive, positive and one negative? Well, the question doesn't tell us straight up, but it, if we take a closer look, it does tell us that the magnitude of all the charges is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, which is a positive number. If the question were trying to tell us that the charges were negative, it would have a minus in front of the 2.3. So that's the second thing. We have uh, three positive charges, so they are all like charges, so they are all repelling. Okay, so because the question is really only asking about Q1, we're going to really zero in on Q1 and kind of forget about Q2 and Q3. So what direction is Q1 actually being pushed in? I mean, it's easy when there's two charges, right? Because they're just going to go in opposite directions to one another. When there's three, it gets a little bit trickier, but luckily we can just split it up into two lots of two charges. So let's just, for a moment, get rid of Q3. So we're left with Q1 and Q2. And this is easy, right? We know what way Q1 is going to go. It's going to go that way. So let's now bring back Q3 and get rid of Q2. And again, this is easy. Q1 is going to go that way. So let's bring back Q2 and keep Q3. And now what direction do you think Q1 is going to go? Somewhere in between, right? Somewhere around this way. So remember that uh, the reason that Q1 is traveling a bit more vertical than horizontal is because Q3 is having a stronger effect on Q1 than Q2. So that's the direction that Q1 is going to go, about there. So hopefully that all made sense. If it did, you're doing a lot better than I was my first time. So now that we have kind of a good idea about what's going on, I think we're ready to start introducing some equations and playing with numbers. So the question is asking for the size of the force experienced by Q1. So the equation we need to calculate this is Coulomb's Law. So if you haven't seen my last um, video, you might want to freeze frame here because it's going to come in handy. And before you ask, no, we cannot just add a Q3 into Coulomb's Law. It is to calculate two charges and two charges only. There's not really an equation to calculate three charges, so what we need to do is, doing what we did just a moment ago, we need to split up the question into two easier parts. So let's get rid of Q3 again, and we'll be left with Q1 and Q2. And this is easy, right? We've done this. We just have to plug the numbers into Coulomb's Law. So let's call the force between Q1 and Q2 F12, just to keep things clear. So plugging in the numbers to Coulomb's law, we'll get 
F12 is equal to K, which is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared coulombs to the negative 2. Multiply by 2.3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. And we're just going to square that because all the charges are equal. So instead of just multiplying it again, we'll square it over 2 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. So the 10 to the negative 2 is just to keep our um, units in SI units because uh, the question gives us centimeters and we need to keep it in meters. So if you put all this into your calculator with your correct brackets, you'll get an answer of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. Cool! So we've calculated the size of the force between Q1 and Q2. Now we just need to calculate the size of the force between Q1 and Q3 using the exact same method. So let's bring back Q3 and get rid of Q2. And let's call the force between Q1 and Q3 F13. So now looking back at Coulomb's law, instead of writing out the whole equation again, let's see what we can do. So K, Coulomb's constant, is going to be the same because it's a constant. So we can leave the 8.99 times 10 to the 9. And Q1 and Q2, or in this case Q3, is again going to be the same, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 9, because all the charges are equal. The only thing that's going to change is the distance separating them, because Q3 is separated by a distance of um, 1 centimeter to Q1, whereas Q2 was separated by 2 centimeters. So let's just rub out the 2 and put a 1, and on your calculator you can simply just change the 2 to a 1. And if you plug all this in, you should get an answer of F13 is equal to 4.7 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. So to find the overall force experienced by Q1, we need to add F12 and F13 as vectors, because of course a force is a vector. So if you don't know what a vector is or how to do vector addition, I would really recommend you find out. I didn't know what vectors were when I first started my physics degree and it made things pretty complicated. I could not figure out why I kept getting everything wrong. But anyway, enough about me. So if you already know how to do vector addition or you CBF finding out, let's keep going. So because our vectors F12 and F13 are at right angles to one another, or orthogonal, we can add them using Pythagoras. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So when you're doing vector addition using Pythagoras, it's usually a good idea to draw your vectors so that they make a triangle. So if we draw F12 and F13, when we add them, we're going to get a new vector, which we're going to call F, because this is the overall force experienced by charge Q1. This F is what we have been looking for the whole time. So if we compare this triangle to a Pythagorean triangle, it becomes pretty clear where we make our substitutions. So the C becomes F, the A becomes F12, and B becomes F13. So that leaves us with f squared equals f12 squared plus f13 squared. And we already know the values to f12 and f13, right? We just worked it out. So now to find f, all we need to do is plug in the numbers and solve. So if we just plug in the numbers, we're going to get f squared is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons all squared plus 4.7 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons all squared. And if we add these together, you can use your calculator, I know it's kind of hard with the scientific notation, we'll get f squared is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. And because this f is still squared, we need to take the square root of both sides. So we'll get f is equal to 4.9 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. And that is the final answer. So there we have it. The charge Q1 is being repelled in this direction with a force of 4.9 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. Okay guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I really hope it helped. Uh, here are some related videos I thought you might like. And hey, if you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what I can help you out with. See you next time.